video is based around a question that comes up quite frequently and I'm here to answer it today. So let's go ahead and dive into our project. What is it? Painting laminate furniture. Can you do it successfully? Absolutely. You're just gonna have to take some extra steps and some precautions to make sure that that paint is there to stay. So here is piece one of four. I've got four of these to do. It's part of a set for a client. And here's the thing. This is gonna require some different prep than just the normal clean scuff sand and go. And the reason why is we've got different materials here. So there are many variations of the French Provencal style as far as what they come in material wise. You can have solid wood. You can have solid wood and wood veneer. You can have wood veneer, solid wood, laminate, formica. Here we have a combination. Our top is a laminate or a formica type material and then some of it is wood and some of it's wood veneer. Which means if I'm going to paint something with that different type of material, I want to ensure the adhesion. When you have a slick surface like formica or laminate, the key is to do a bonding primer. So my mom has already prepped these as far as cleaning them. The next step would be clean, sand, bonding primer, paint, and then top coat. So I'm gonna walk you through those different steps as we transform this piece. First step is we want to go ahead and scuff up the surface. This is 220 grit sandpaper. You may be wondering, how do you figure it out? How do you know what a piece is made of? What materials that it consists of? Well, sometimes you just have to do a little bit of investigating. Now, I knew right off the bat because I've done so many pieces in my career, I knew this top was laminate. Now, you could sand until the cows come home and it's not going to change. It is laminate. That is what it is. You're not gonna break through, it's not veneer. And I'll show you how other parts of the dresser, you can figure out what they are. So this one, I just sanded this banding or this trim right here. This is actually a solid trim. All right, now let's go around the corner here. And on this piece right here, this is different. This is a laminate over MDF. And then you have your top here which you can see this line right here is another material and that is the laminate. Now, down here, I had to sand the leg. That's a knot. That, this area here, this leg is solid wood. So we've got a lot of different materials going on here. So I'm gonna continue to sand this and get it all prepped and ready for our next step, which is the bonding primer. The additional thing I wanted to show you was this. This is the original finish here that is cracking. So we wanna go ahead and scuff sand all of those cracks out before we go in with our primer, or your finish is just gonna be reflective of what's currently on there. You'll have a painted finish that looks crackled. So we wanna go ahead and sand that smooth. Day two, our dresser has two coats. I still have to do some of the details like the edges of the drawers and things like that. But I was able to get two full coats on. The vanity, I was able to get one coat on, so that still needs more. And then these, I have to paint all together. I went ahead yesterday while I had everything in my spray gun. I did all the bonding primer, and then I was able to get these two pieces tackled. So the thing that I typically do the next day is I will come out and I'll do a scratch test. Now, you don't need to go get a tool or anything like that. Just use your fingernails and make sure. Now, remember, this is a laminate top, and just make sure you give it a good scratch all over just to make sure that you are not going to penetrate through that paint your adhesion is good um, you don't have to go crazy as you can see no paint came off that's what we're looking for we want to make sure that we just have great adhesion all the way around so I will do my little scratch test all the way around in several areas of the piece just to make sure everything is Something that I always do and you don't need any kind of a fancy a piece of equipment to do so. This is a standard moving dolly. All I do is just put it behind it and then I bring it down 
and lay it on its back like it is. That way you can get underneath what I call the undercarriage here, this whole line, this should always be painted. Um, that way from different angles, even though it's standing upright, uh, you still can see that. The other thing is you can get in these little nooks and crannies that again, when standing upright, you can't get uh, the underneath lip here. Uh, that is also great to be able to be on its back and get all of that. So now what I'll end up doing is doing my final coat basically in this position. For a buttery smooth finish is taking, this one's brand new. I just used it on this one. It's the extra fine sanding pad. And in between layers of bonding primer and paint, I will go ahead and take this and just do a quick little sand and that will make it so buttery smooth. You can see it removes a little bit of the excess there, so you'll wanna wipe that off, but that will make your surface so soft and smooth to the touch, okay. perfect. We've got all four pieces done. They are all painted and ready to go. Now, I could stop right there. I don't need to top coat these. This paint is an all-in-one. It does have a primer paint and top coat in it, but I wanna add some extra sheen and durability. The finish on these, I would consider it to be kind of a matte slash eggshell finish. And adding that top coat will not only add that extra durability for the longevity of the piece, but also a little sheen. So that's what we're gonna go for. Now I have completely gotten these ready by just doing a light scuff sand slash buffing to make sure they're nice and smooth and wipes them down with microfiber cloth and we're ready to go ahead and get our top okay, coat Okay, and I'm gonna use this top coat here. It's the Lily Moon Stellar Shield. It's a non-yellowing water-based top coat and I emptied out most of the paint in my gun but there's still paint in there which you can absolutely do that. It creates an extra smooth finish and it just looks so good when you have a little bit of that paint mixed in with your top coat. So let's go ahead and get the top coat on. And just like that, we have four pieces top coated. Now I don't always work this way. This project worked out this way because I have four pieces that are being done exactly the same color. Everything needed to happen exactly the same. The prep, the prime, the paint, the top coat, it worked out perfectly. I actually get asked that often is, do I do days of all prep, do I do days of all priming and painting, etc.? No, I typically work on one to three projects at the same time and they're usually all different, different colors, uh, different things that we're doing to them. But in this case, in less than five minutes flat, I've got four pieces top coated. Now I will let those dry and I'll come back and I'll do one more coat. Two to three coats is perfectly fine for top coat, especially when you're working with a product that already has that built-in top coat. So I'll wait for these to dry and then we'll be all done. Put the hardware on and our project will be finished. And while we're sitting here waiting for these to dry, one other thing that I want to address, because I do get this inquiry often, and that is how long do pieces take you to finish? So these four pieces, I did have some assistance. My mom helped me clean them all down. So she did all of that prep. We started them on Saturday. I Today is Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. The video won't come out, obviously, until later during the week. But on Saturday, we cleaned them. On Sunday, I primed them. And Monday, I painted them. I finished painting them this morning. Today, we're top coating. So that just tells you. And I didn't spend eight hours a day, obviously. We spent uh, about an hour cleaning these four pieces. I spent about another hour sanding these pieces, really sanding them, making sure that all of my finish that was on there existing was good for, for priming and painting. So I'd say I spent about an hour really doing all that detail work. Priming them, it took me about as long as you just saw me to top coat two times over. So 15 minutes and then dry time, 15 minutes. And then I painted 
two of the pieces yesterday in a matter of like two hours, finished off the other two pieces today and top coated. So doesn't take that long. Thank you so much for joining me today for this video. I hope it was helpful for you, but wait, don't leave just yet. Stay on my channel because there are a ton of other helpful videos for you to get through the furniture refinishing process. Thank you so much and I'll catch you on the next video.